Huh. For those of you still here watching the video, we are still holding the contest for Caternix quail hatching eggs courtesy of White's Family Farmhouse. <laughs> but, woo. But you got to put vodka in it. Thank you for coming to check us out today here at New York Eternix. My name is Kenny, as most of you already know. And for those of you who don't, welcome to the channel. This is New York Eternix, your source for everything quail and game bird related. Before we begin, if this is your first time here, or if you've been here before but haven't subscribed, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified in real time whenever we leave new content on the channel. Now before we go off too far on discussing every other type of quail out there, I want to dial back and take another look at the Japanese Caternix in detail. I've learned a lot about this species of bird in particular, even before I started raising them not too long ago. The scientific name for the Japanese Caternix is Caternix japonica, which is not to be confused with the common quail, whose scientific name is Caternix caternix. The Japanese Caternix is mainly a domesticated bird, whereas the common quail is mainly a wild migratory bird. I say mainly because you can find domesticated common quail just as you can find wild Japanese quail. Their taxonomy range meet in Mongolia near Lake Baikal without any evidence of inbreeding. The two species have been crossed in captivity, but the offspring proved to show reduced fertility. The Japanese Caternix is an old world quail, found in East Asia and many homes and backyards around the world. It's played an active role in humanity since at least the 12th century and still plays a major role in industry and scientific research. The breeds of Japanese quail in the United States are Texas A&M, English White, Golden Range, Red Range, Italian, Manchurian, Tibetan, Rosetta, Scarlet, Rue de Lou, I love saying that, Golden Tuxedo. The male and female Japanese Caternix are not very easy to tell apart unless we're talking about the jumbos, which have a telltale sign on the chest area. The female will usually have dark spots all over the throat and upper chest area, whereas the male will usually just be lighter brown in that area. Now this is taken directly from Wikipedia. The morphology of the Japanese quail differs depending on its stage in life. As chicks, both male and female individuals exhibit the same kind of plumage and coloring. Their heads are tawny in color, the small black patches littering the area above the beak. The wings in the back of the chick are a pale brown and back also having four brown stripes running along its length. A pale yellow brown stripe surrounded by smaller black stripes runs down the top of the head. The male Japanese quail tends to be smaller than the female. The domesticated birds will usually weigh between 100 and 120 grams. Commercial strains bred for meat production can reach up to 300 grams. Researchers have found at least 28 different call types from this quail, and this is based on circumstances in which they were used and the various behaviors exhibited during the call. These call types are different between the male and the female with the same stimulus resulting in different vocalizations. The male crow has been found to expedite the development of the female's gonads. The Japanese quail hens exposed to this crowing will reach sexual maturity slightly faster than hens who are not exposed to this. The crow pattern has been found to be a little different when comparing males with mates to males without mates. Wild populations of the Caternix quail are found all over East Asia and Russia. This does include India, Korea, China, and of course Japan. Some have kept to wintering in Japan, but most will migrate south to areas like Cambodia, southern China, Vietnam, and Laos. It's also been known to live in many parts of Africa as well, including Tanzania, Malawi, Kenya, Namibia, Madagascar, and the area of the Nile Valley reaching from Kenya to Egypt. They've been known to breed mostly in the East and Central Asia regions, but have been observed to breed in some regions of Europe and Turkey. 
Like most other quail, the Japanese quail is a ground living species and they like to stay in range of dense vegetation. And that's in order to protect themselves from predators. Grassy fields, riverbanks, and agricultural fields have been a favorite of this species since, you know, pretty much the beginning. In another excerpt from Wikipedia, normally the Japanese quail has been considered to possess an underdeveloped sense of taste. This being evidenced by their inability to distinguish different kinds of carbohydrates presented to them. However, studies have shown that a limited ability to taste is indeed present. Evidence for this includes quail individuals exhibiting preferential choice of sucrose containing solutions over distilled water and the avoidance of salty solutions. Basically what this means is that the Japanese quail isn't quite as downright dumb as originally thought, at least not when it comes to taste. Now these birds, at least the ones in my backyard, are dumb as bricks in a lot of other ways, but they do seem to recognize what's good for them and what isn't. Not too much is known about their sense of smell, but they have been found to be able to detect certain pesticides in a toxic chemical in food called lectin. And this is by only using their sense of smell. I'm sure more research will be done on this in the coming years though. Uh, now using something called nasolateral conversion of the eyes, which I have never heard of, this quail is able to achieve frontal overlap of the eye fields. This makes it so that the Japanese quail has excellent long distance perception that's due to binocular field accommodation. In order to maintain focus on a single object while moving, the quail will exhibit corresponding head movements. These birds have been known to recognize color over shape and form. Not much is known about their hearing, but they've been known to be able to distinguish one human from another. Like the California quail mentioned in a previous video, which you can check out by clicking the card above, the Coternix quail loves to take dust baths, using them to stay clean and cool. Dust bathing is also great for parasite removal. The Japanese quail has been known to exhibit both monogamous and polygamous relationships. The females will usually bond with one or two males in a domestic situation. The peak breeding season is summer, and this is when the male's testicles will increase in size and testosterone concentrations peak. Like some other species of bird, the Japanese Coternix has a somewhat violent mating ritual. The male will grab onto the back of the female's neck or head, using his beak in order to hold on when he goes to mount her. When this happens, the male will extend his cloaca by curving his back in an effort to initiate cloacal contact. Once this happens and the female is inseminated, the male will usually display a proud distinctive strut. The female Japanese quail will usually either make herself available by crouching in front of a male to make mating easier. Conversely, they will stand tall and run away from the male if they are not looking to mate. Males that act aggressively towards the females have shown to reduce successful matings. They tend to lay their eggs in the few hours before dusk, and in the case of the domesticated Japanese Coternix, they don't get broody for the most part, meaning their eggs will need to be incubated in order to keep the bloodline going. You may run across a broody hen once in a while, but you're better off sticking those quail eggs in an incubator or even under a bantam hen, which is a chicken. The eggs laid by the Japanese quail will usually weigh between 8 and 13 grams, with the average being about 10 grams. The older hens seem to produce larger eggs than their younger counterparts. The earliest records of the domestication of the Japanese quail date back to the 12th century, but evidence suggests that these birds have been domesticated as early as the 11th. They were originally bred to be songbirds. In the early part of the 1900s, the Japanese started selective breeding to increase egg production in the Japanese quail. This led to a heavy flourishing industry by the 1940s, but the events of World War II led to the complete loss of quail bred for song type and almost all of the ones used for egg production. The Japanese quail that we have today in commercial and laboratory lines are originated from the population of quail that were left over from the war. Keeping Japanese Coternix at home is a breeze with all of the available information out there. This is one of the most heavily researched birds in the world. The Japanese Coternix is very closely related to the common quail. So closely related in fact that they are almost indistinguishable from each other. They're known as an allopatric species. The Japanese quail and the common quail are sometimes crossed to create hybrids. These hybrids are used to restock declining wild quail populations, usually right before the hunting season. 
Now, it was thought that this practice could be detrimental to the native quail populace. This is likely due to the decreased fertility that I mentioned earlier. Countries like Greece, France, Spain, Portugal, England, Scotland, Canada land, China, Australia, and Italy release thousands of these hybrids into the wild each year to supplement their wild quail populations, which are always seemingly on the decline. The Japanese quail is an easily manageable bird, and it has a very fast turnaround time. It takes an average of 16 to 18 days for the Japanese quail eggs to hatch, and the bird will usually reach full maturity by six weeks, already fertile and laying eggs. I've managed to get almost three generations out of the course of a single summer, just to give you an idea of how fast I mean. The Japanese Caternix is farmed in large quantities across the globe and will likely continue to be farmed, as it is a popular choice among game bird enthusiasts. A feed to egg conversion ratio of 2.62 was accomplished by the 1990s, making the Japanese quail an excellent choice for raising. It will lay an average of 300 eggs a year and has proven to be very important in providing meat to developing countries. In 1957, the University of California and Auburn University proposed the Japanese quail's value to biomedical research. It's widely used across laboratories to this day to research fields such as nutrition, genetics, pathology, physiology, embryology, cancer, behavior, and pesticide toxicity. Side note, Japanese quail eggs have orbited the Earth in several Soviet and Russian spacecraft. In March 1990, eggs on Mir were incubated and hatched. Yes, you can apparently hatch eggs in space. And for those of you still here watching the video, we are still holding the contest for Caternix quail hatching eggs, and that's courtesy of White's Family Farmhouse in Maine, New York. Now, Maine, New York is not to be confused with Maine, the state, but Maine, New York here in the state of New York. Uh, now, in order to participate in this contest, be sure to leave a like for the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, then head over to Facebook, join the group, and leave a comment on the official contest thread. You'll be entered for a chance to win 30 free hatching eggs. Good luck. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I'd like to thank you guys once again for coming to check us out here today at New York Eternix. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Also, leave a like for the video and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell and you'll be notified in real time whenever we leave new content on the channel. This is New York Eternix, your source for everything quail and game bird related. Thanks for watching.